Luke chapter 2. Last night we covered this part. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. And this census took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went out to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in their fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring to you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angel had gone away from them into the heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see the thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the sayings that were told them concerning this child. And all of those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. <coughs> then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. Father God, once again, Lord, we know we live in a busy world. We know, Lord, as we look at the news and things around us, Lord, that uh, the world is just spinning and spinning and spinning. And yet, Lord, we pause and take time to remember that we are not of this world, but we belong to you, Lord. And so we ask you, Lord, that you would help us stay focused and that you would help us, Lord, not only here at Calvary Chapel, Manchos, Lord, but all our churches across America, all your people, Lord, across the world, that we might still be looking up to your redemption, Lord. We anticipate your coming for all of us, Lord. We glorify you and bless you this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you just be seated for a few minutes, church? As we begin, I want to point out to you some differences uh, from the different Gospels like Matthew and Mark Gospel. It's Dr. Luke. Uh, this, this section we just read, Luke chapter 2, it's famous. This, this little section here, so many things have come out of this. And I just want to share with you one little part that has come out is the songs of Christmas. As, as the Holy Spirit moved Dr. Luke to write this, check this out. We'll put up slide number one, just songs from this gospel and uh, things that we have picked up from uh, uh, these verses that we have read. Angels we have heard on high comes from verses 13 through 14. The first Noel, Christmas songs, verses 8 through 13. Heart the herald angels sings, right, from verses 10 through 14. It came upon a midnight clear, verses 13 to 14. And joy to the world, verses, verse 10. Our second slide, if we may. Yeah, and so, O Holy Night, from verses 7 through 18. Silent Night, Holy Night, verses 6 through 8, right? What child is this, verse 17 through 18, and of course, while shepherds watch their flocks. Last night at our Christmas Eve service, we began with verse 1, right, of chapter 2, and we ended with verse 6. And finally, like coming to the end of a long day for us, Joseph and Mary had completed uh, the drama of complying with the Roman census that caused them to make, uh, to take up and, and pick up and leave Nazareth and journey those 68.9 miles, if you may, to Bethlehem. 
The last part of the trip, as I shared with you, is all uphill. It's like going up to Telluride, taking a trek, walking, no, no nothing. And I shared with you, a lot of people say, well, they did it with a, with a donkey and it was easier for them. No, 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 no. Donkeys, as you read history, were really for the more affluent people to have a ride. It's kind of like today to have a nice ride, right? You need a nice job to do those kind of things. So imagine without 550 or the highways that we use, they trekked across. You know, it was very difficult for them. And so from verse 7, as we pick it up today, we learn that Mary brought first her firstborn son. Church, for those of you who have uh, been with us, you know, uh, uh, for the last time we've been talking about these things. And, and now I just want to take you real quickly. When, a, when our wives are going to deliver, right before that time, everything is in chaos. Everything is hard. Uh, when a friend is going to the hospital and she's going to deliver and, and they call you. And can, can you help me with, you know, husband's late at work or he's traveling or whatever. It is drama, right? But finally, when the baby comes... What happens? There is peace. For us husbands who have been in that room, all of a sudden there is peace. It is quiet. All the drama is over with. And it ends as soon as that baby is born. There seems to be such peace that no matter the difficulty in getting there for Joseph and Mary, and even to be lying in that major for the delivery of a ba uh, the baby, uh, it's over with. Who cares about the stable? Who cares about this and that? And I shared with you, while we journey in this life, really, who cares about the cars we drive or the houses we live in or whatever? We are on our way to heaven. Our earth is drama, and it's going, there's going to be more drama. But it's just the means that we're going through right now. We are traveling by. We are temporarily in this world. It'll soon be over with. Mary, she wraps him, as most moms uh, at that time, time did in long bands of cloth, right, giving uh, the limb strength and protection. Here's a, I want to give you uh, a few takeaways here, uh, four of them. Once again, the first and most prominent one is God is faithful to his promises. And again, we talked about from the from Genesis account all to the prophets, right? God said it would happen. It did happen. So God is always faithful to his promises. And it's important for you to grasp that to honor that because we too then will be in heaven before we know it. Amen? God is faithful to his promises. And if your name is listed in the Lamb's Book of Life, you will be in heaven. Why? Again, God is faithful to his promises. And after 4,000 years of, of announcements and the prophet sharing that he would come, he would be a virgin birth, it came, it appeared. So that's number one. Secondly, again, we talked about inconveniences. On this earth, if Joseph and Mary suffered through them, right, the angel saying, hey, dude, get up and go. You know, everything is, 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 is like always for us, something like that. But we also will be rewarded in the end. We'll have peace. So application for us, a little takeaway, don't let inconveniences keep you from uh, taking part in God's divine will for you. God has a will for you. You're just not living out your life. Things that come up, the Lord's already aware of them. And he's positioned you to go through them. Some of them are hardships. I agree. Some of them are inconvenience as Mary and Joseph's lives were. But you're in God's will. You're his child. Before you know it, we'll be have that peace with him. And we talked a little bit about hospitality, right? Thank God for the manger. Also translated as a stall. Uh, an enclosement for animals. But listen. Joseph and Mary accepted it. They didn't make no big deal. At that time, no Christmas lights hanging out or whatever. We get it, right? Uh, here's the application. Whatever is offered to us here on the earth, on our journey toward heaven, accept it graciously. Accept it. Learn to do that as it will work for us in the end as well as it did for Jesus. Jesus, was, was he any less because he was born in a major? No, of course not. The world, again, as we saw Herod, they expect something different for, for the high class or the, 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 the mucky mucks or whatever. We're just regular people going through. Some of us are a little bit more blessed than others. We get it or whatever God's purpose in that is. We don't know. We know we have more responsibility. But the point is, it doesn't really matter because we're passing through. We embrace Christmas. Christmas is a great time to be honoring the Lord. Happy birthday, Jesus. Yes, because we're going to see him soon. He's going to welcome us. It's just a matter of time. We need to hang in there. We need to keep our focus in him. And also, 
our fourth little takeaway, hospitality. Don't pass up those opportunities. The privilege to be a host, to offer hospitality. Interesting, Peter would write in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 9. He says, quote, be hospitable one to another without grumbling. Without grumbling. Come on, church. If we're family, we're family. We can be with one another. We can accept one another. We can extend that joy. God calls us to do that. From verse 7, there was no room for them in the inn. And from verse 8, the shepherds were watching their flocks by night. It gives us the impression, again, that Jesus was born after dark, right? Certainly, that's when the no vacancy signs are turned on today. Church, and then the scene changes from the stable and the busy inn to the surrounding Judean hills, right? It is here that we find the shepherds watching over their sheep. Now, before we begin to romanticize in this, the life of a shepherd, right? Think about this. They were outside. They were in the cold, if you may. They can't go to sleep because if they do, there's banditos out there, thieves, if you may. And they might come by and steal their sheep, right? Or wild animals might just want a midnight snack. So the shepherds are always on alert. They don't rest like you would think they do. Oh, just cuddle up. So they're outside in the cold on alert. Yes, they can get warm by a fire. Uh, maybe a nice little woolly sheep combined, right? They can. But what does that do in their religion? What did that do for them? It would render them unclean. That's, so they themselves, they cannot even be around the temple. And most people looked at them, oh, stinky man, get outside. You know, eat on the outside. That's how it would be for them. Verse 9, it says, Behold, the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid. Although we are not given the angel's name, but you, again, you've been with us lately. It's Gabriel giving those messages uh, uh, most lately from heaven. But I want to pause for a moment and consider how amazed the angels themselves must have been when they saw the creator born a creature, the word as a speechless baby. Put up slide number three, please. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 says this, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty may become rich. We celebrate Christmas because of all people, we are going to have a place in heaven for eternity. And we're going to see, look around and say, I don't deserve this. I don't, how did all this happen? Because we place our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He became poor that we might become rich. It's huge. It's a huge thing for him to leave heaven and come down and live among us as us. This is a great thing. We love him. We love him for that. For those of us who now have that personal relationship, how could our hearts not respond with worship and wonder? Slide number four, please. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says this. Check this out. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. It's part of our Christian doctrine. God became a man in Jesus Christ. The world would say, how can this? We know where the world's at. They want to tax and build palaces, as Herod did, right? They still do today. But God was manifest in the flesh, showed himself in many ways in Jesus. Church, the question we want to ask, though, why the shepherds? Why this announcement not to the priest and to the scribes? I mean, this is a great announcement. By visiting the shepherds, again, considers as outcasts. The angel revealed the grace of God toward mankind. Church, remember that God does not call the rich and mighty. He calls the poor and lowly. Luke chapter 1, verse 51 through 53. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 to 29. One more observation before we go move on from here. The Messiah came to both the good, the Messiah came to be both the good shepherd, right? John 10, and the Lamb of God sacrificed for the sins of the world. John 1 29. Hopefully, these shepherds that received the announcement related to Jesus being the good shepherd and the Lamb of God. And here's the main thing: he they passed it on to their children. As they too, most likely in that era, in those times, would grow up also to be shepherds. And you know what they could say about the Lord? They could say, hey, we can relate to him. He was one of us, the good shepherd. It's amazing, right? Verse 10, then the angel said to the, 
them, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings, a great joy, which will be to all people. Church, observe with me. The, number one, the angel is asking them not to be afraid. This is interesting because by now, shepherds that have been on the job for a year, you know, night after night, are for the most part not afraid. They're not afraid of things that happen in the dark. They don't scare so easily. So if brave shepherds were afraid of what they saw and heard, then you can believe that this thing was real. That in the middle of the night, this light, boom, shined all around them. The glory of the Lord, which is bright, if you may, was all around them. And they're looking around. And that's before ever ready. Before all the battery flashlight things, right? Big thing. Secondly, the good tidings or good news in the second part of verse 10. Here's a key. It's for all people. For all people. It's not just for the Jews. It's not just for Republicans or Democrats, right? Not just for the poor, as the shepherds were, but also for the rich. If you're rich today, listen, God reaches out to you as well. It's not that we put the rich always this way or whatever. God reaches out to all people. The angel brought good news from heaven, a great joy for all who would receive it. Collectively for all the people, individually for each one. And the angel goes on to say in 11, For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Church, the city of David here means Bethlehem. So we have Savior, Christ, and Lord, right? They're titles. They are titles. And they summarize the saving work of Jesus and his sovereign position. But God was called back in chapter 1, verse 47, Savior, Jesus is called here. The word Christ means anointed, referring to Jesus' royal, his messianic position. The word Lord was a title of ruler, right? Jesus is destined to sit and distribute salvation's benefit from God's side, ruling with the Father. So indeed, this is a mini theology as this uh, slide is showing you here. Number one, he is Savior, which is expressed in his name, Jesus. Secondly, he is Christ the anointed of God, the Messiah of Israel. And thirdly, he is the Lord, God manifest in the flesh. I know, what if this mini theology was too much for the shepherds? No problem for that. God's going to give the, the, through the angel a big clue. But before we leave this, understand who Jesus is. Understand why we value him. Understand why if the world says, don't mention him, we still say, how could I not mention him? You want to hear a testimony, what he's done for me and with me through my whole life? And then tell him your story. Each and every one of us has a story. How could we ever deny Jesus? How could we never, ever say he's our savior, where he's brought us from? He is amazing. We cannot keep our mouths quiet. And perhaps we'll suffer more for it as the years go by. We don't know where the days go by. But listen, how could we deny who he is? We can't. Verse 12. And this will be a sign to you again, you know, shepherd guys. You know, you will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. You will find? They have to go look. They have to go look. It's always an effort to look. It's always an effort to receive from the Lord. We have to go out of our way sometimes, right? Here, the angel is giving the shepherd two signs. Number one, the baby would be wrapped in swaddling cloths. Now, shepherds most likely... They were familiar how the poor wrapped their babies. Swaddling cloths, long strips of linen, if you may, or cloth, right? However, the angel had just told them that this baby was the Lord. That this baby was the Lord. No one had ever seen the Lord, you know, as a baby, right? No one had ever seen the Lord as a little baby wrapped in swaddling cloth. This is what's different. The Lord is going to be wrapped up. There's, I'm sure there's, What? You know, this is amazing. And secondly, that he would be lying in a manger. The creator, the Lord, lying in a manger. Now, this was different. And it is doubtful that the shepherds had ever seen a baby in such an unlikely place. Just regular babies are going to be born in a, or laid uh, there in the food trough. Again, this was awful that a stable was reserved for the Lord of glory. He, the creator that created all the that we see and all that we don't see entered human history not as Superman type of a hero, but as a little, really poor, 
regular baby. He made that entrance. 13. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will toward men. Church first, one angel appeared and gave the glad announcement. And then a chorus of angels joined them. So if they weren't afraid now, I love the way the Lord does things. He always steps things with us. Can you handle this? And he gives us step number one, right? And then he goes on. Can you handle this? Here's step number two and three. Step number one for us is we realized our position. We accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And we had the promise of eternal life. Listen, step number two is going to come when we are resurrected or we are raptured with him in the cloud. But we know that we come back to earth for a thousand years and then it's the great white throne judgment. And then the new Jerusalem comes coming down and we are in heaven forever and ever. One, two, three, it's going to step it up for us. We have so much to look forward to in our future because of who he is and what he's done. Again, the angels, and, and they've come out with this announcement, right? Uh, in the book of Job, chapter 38, verse 7, we learn that angels praise God at creation. And now they are praising him at the beginning of a new creation. The whole purpose of the plan of salvation is glory to God. Later, you could check this out on your own in Ephesians 1, 6, and verse 12 and verse 14. Glory to God. Most of you had guys anyway. I could relate to you guys and ladies. But perhaps you had dolls and, and uh, you, you had the little tea parties and you sat down. And we, we play the part, do we not? Oh, have a little cup of tea with me. Oh, would you like a little bit? And we do that with our, with our kids, with our, the girls, with our dolls. Dads, sometimes we have to, you know, get in there and join the tea. All make-believe. And then we as guys, we do the army men, right? And, you know, and, oh, I want to be a uh, rifleman or Crawley who's coming up the side. And you remember all those little toys. And we always wanted to join our toys. And, and we do that. Now watch this. Ah! You know, or Spider-Man or something like that. Listen, listen. Glory to God. Why? Because he became a man. He became the one that joined his creation so that we could relate to a real God. And then it's just not in our head that, oh, yeah, imagine heaven, use the crutch. No, no, no. He came down and the facts that he was born and the history of everything that took place. He became a man. How could we not glorify him? Who could do this? We pretend with our tea and with our army men. But he said, I'm going to go down there. I got to fix what happened with the, at the garden. So he became a man. That's an amazing thing. God's glory once before had dwelt in the tabernacle, Exodus 40, verse 34. And in the temple, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, 1 through 3, but had departed because of the nation's sin. 1 Samuel 4, 21, Ezekiel 8, 4. And there's more. But here's what I want to say. It is now that God's glory was returning to earth in the person of his son. John 1, 14. Could we put up our next slide? John 1, 14 says this. Check it out. And the word became flesh and dwelled among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Wow. The word became flesh. Church, that the lowly major was the holy of holies because Jesus was there. Verse 15. So it was. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, hey, man, let's go get a burger. I can't believe. No, that's not what it says, right? <laughs> that the angels said, what was that? I need Excedrin. No, it wasn't anything like that, right? It says, the angels said to one another, let us now go. Again, action on human part. Action. Take that step. Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning the child. And all of those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Listen, church, everyone knows that shepherds at this time, they are not easily fooled. They are practical men of the world who have little to do with nonsense, if you may. If they said they saw angels and went and found the Messiah, then again, you can believe it. 
God selected hard-working men to be the first witnesses that his son had come into the world. 19. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Church, she had, a, she had to have a smile for even in this stinky stable, Father God not only had his hand upon her and her growing family, but God continued his encouragement through his words via the angel's message and the shepherds telling of their experience. And they were there like right now with her. Shepherds. Wow. 20. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all these things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. As we close this morning. The shepherds were the outcasts. Yet God brought the good news through them to them. Perhaps there is someone here today. And perhaps you are feeling yourself like an outcast. Perhaps you, like the shepherds of the day, consider yourself unclean. I'm glad you guys, you say, are having a Christmas party. I'm glad you guys, but man, don't get into my life. I am totally unworthy. I am, I've done things that, and I've seen things. We don't, we don't, don't, please don't confess them to us. We hear you. Why? Because we were once there ourselves. We don't say that we're the church of the holies or whatever. No, holy as in holes in Swiss cheese in us that you could pick us apart. Absolutely so. We're like you. Listen, Jesus has brought word to you today. He has come to the poor in spirit, to the ones who humble themselves before him. The promise of peace and goodwill come to those who welcome God's son. If you haven't welcomed him in your heart as of now, our prayer is that you will today on Christmas Day. And then for sure, you too will have joy in your heart. Let's close in prayer. Father God, so grateful for our children, Lord. The parents, again, who allowed them to come. And we hear from the little ones. Your seed being planted and nurtured, Lord, through caring adults here. And, Lord, for our Calvary Kids Choir, again, Lord, what beautiful songs. And through memory, Lord, and the voices and the tones, Lord, just amazing. We're blessed. And then, Lord, through a play that reminds us we are in the world, yet everything that goes on with the world, we're not part of it. No, no, no. Our focus is on you, dear Jesus, and your return. And as we, we await to be sharing. Lord, Father, we, we thank you for our salvation. But, Lord, if there's anyone here this morning that has not the confidence of where they will spend eternity if they were to pass on today, Lord, we, it's they who we pray for, that today they will be certain by accepting you, Jesus, into their heart. As we celebrate your birth today on Christmas Day, Lord, help them to celebrate your birth in their heart so that they could be, as we deem, born again. As you say in John, Lord, chapter 3, we must become born again. Would you help them make that decision? Would you help them take their, their failures to you, Lord? Their questions to you, Lord. Their doubts to you. And Lord, would you receive them? Help them as the shepherds took that step of faith. Help them take that step of faith this morning as well. And so now while every head is bowed, eyes are closed, if there is someone here this morning, you have not asked Jesus Christ to be born in your heart. You have not asked him to be your Lord and Savior. You, don't, you do not perhaps have an assurance of where you will spend, spend eternity. We want to pray for you. We want to pray for you. Would you raise your hand as I look across the sanctuary? Everybody else ahead, you're praying. Anyone else that would say, you know, I, I just... I want to ask the Lord to come into my heart today. Best gift you could give the Lord is give him yourself. Is there anyone this morning? Raise your hand high in the air. All right. Anyone else? Father, we thank you for these hands. We thank you for faith and for putting feet to our faith. We ask, Lord, that you would uh, help these, Lord, to raise their hand to come forward and be prayed for, Lord. Be led in that prayer asking you to come into their heart. For the rest of us, Lord. We're grateful and we celebrate your birthday today. We love you, Jesus. And we close this service in your name. Amen.